Hey guys, Coach Mack, playfastfootball.blogspot.com. I apologize for the self-operated camera today, but we're on spring break. So I'm in the office by myself. I don't have anybody to operate the, the camera today, so we're going a little bit low budget. All right. Today we're going to talk a, a little bit about <clears throat> breaking some defensive misconceptions, about identifying what a defensive structure actually is, and then I'm going to go a little bit into the feasibility of playing divorced front split field coverages with a traditional under front look from a 3-4 defensive perspective. All right. First thing I think we need to talk about is understanding what makes a defensive structure. Okay. When you're identifying defensive structures, what you want to look at is the personnel that the defense chooses to use on the football field. Okay. Don't look at the fronts that that defense employs and try and understand what type of defensive football team they are. Fronts are universal. Fronts can be run from any defensive concept. The thing that identifies a defensive structure is the personnel that they put on the field. All right. So right here I've got drawn up classic 3-4 defense. Okay. I think everybody can look at that picture and identify that that's a 3-4 defense. Why? Because there's three down linemen and four linebackers. Well, here's the problem with that. Okay. Anytime you're playing 21 personnel, this is what's described as an oaky front. All right, both guards uncovered, center head up, ends can be in, head up on a tackle, inside eye on a tackle. Both guards are uncovered, we're going to call it Oki. Okay? Anytime you're playing 21 personnel, most 3 4 teams, all right, wouldn't play the linebacker on the tight end side, walked off, he's probably going to be up there played in a nine technique. So now to the untrained eye or anybody that looks, they're going to look at that and say, well, that's a 4 2 defense, or that's a 4 3 defense because there's four guys on the front. Well, no, the front doesn't dictate what the defense is. That's still a 3-4 defensive football team. Okay? Why? Because they have three hands on the ground and four linebackers. That's the personnel they choose to play with. Okay? This same 3-4 team now, all right, versus 21 personnel, 90% of the time, you're going to see 3-4 teams that play some type of under concept. Okay? So now when you look at that defensive concept, that's an under front. An under front or a reduced or a weak eagle front, okay, because strong side guard's uncovered, but the weak side guard is covered. All right? So this is what you would call an under or a reduction front. That is not a 5-2 defense, okay? A lot of people will look at this, people that are new to football or people, all right, that, that don't coach or study a lot of football will look at that and say, well, that's a 5-2 defense. Well, no, it's not. A 5-2 defense would be five defensive linemen with two linebackers. This is still a 3-4 structure because it has three down linemen and four linebackers. They just choose to play an under front or a reduced front. All right? So don't let the picture or a five-man front fool you into thinking that it's some type of 5-2 defense. This is just a 3-4 under concept that most 3-4 teams are going to employ versus first down runs or 21 personnel. Okay, now conversely, all right, if the defense doesn't want to give the offense the same look every time, the 3-4 teams, now they can go under split or reduction split, okay, and they can put the A-shade to the split end side with the 5 technique to the split end side. They can now play the 3 technique to the strong side, okay, with the outside linebacker in the 7, all right. There's your Mike and your Sam. There's your jack back. Okay? So now the same 3-4 team can play what's an over front now, just by calling under split, okay, or under boundary. They can play an over front now. And in the old days, what a lot of teams used to do is they would protect this, all right, by going over, putting the strong safety down, and playing three deep behind. Alright? So now this is under split or under boundary. It's reduction front set to the split end. So now when you look at the picture, most people are going to look at that and say, well, that's a 4-4 defense. No, it's not. That is a 3-4 defense playing a 4-4 concept. Yes, it's six in the box, eight man front, but it's still a 3-4 defense. So you can't be confused by just the picture you look at to try and determine what a team likes to do on defense or what their defensive concepts are. Okay? A 3-4 team is going to deploy four linebackers on the field, three hands on the ground. That's what gives them multiplicity, okay? That what, that's what makes them a little bit different 
to some teams is you have no idea where people are coming from because they're playing with four stand-up backers and only three hands, hands on the ground. They have multiple rushers and multiple droppers. That's what makes the defense, okay, loved by so many people for its diversity in what it can present, okay, and it's very complex in its nature. Now, if you really want to go back, you can go back to the 85 Bears, all right, and you can look at the 85 Bears and they could play what they call or what Buddy Ryan, all right, he, he made up the 46 defense, and it was really just a double eagle front with a vice on the tight end, okay, but he played it out of... If I'm correct, I believe the Bears at 85 were a 4-3 team. So he played it with 4-3 personnel. But even a 3-4 team can play the Bear front. If you just put the nose set up, you put the two ends in three techniques, vice the tight end with the strong safety, now bring the Sam wide, keep the Will wide, play with the Mike and the Jack wider in 40 techniques and a free safety. Now you can play 46 concepts, all right, and you can play them with one free or three deep defense. So a 3-4 team can play the 46 front just as easily as a 4-3 team or anybody else. The fronts are universal. Anybody can get into any front they want. The personnel that's on the field is what dictates who you are as a defense. Okay? The 46 defense actually was, was named, all right, because Doug Plank, who was a safety for the Bears, would play, all right, what they what they call the adjuster backer. All right, I've got him drawn up as the jack here. But 46, Doug Plank was a safety that played linebacker in the 46, and he would be the guy that had to adjust to all one-back sets in motion. All right, so when they really couldn't find or, or figure out a name to play, Buddy Ryan got clever and said, hey, let's call it the 4-6 because Doug Plank, Doug Plank plays the adjuster backer. All right, he's the guy that's got to adjust to all motions in one-back sets, so let's just call it the 46 defense. All right, that's where it actually came from. Okay, the 46 is named after Doug Plank. All right, but it's a front, it's, it's a double eagle with a vice on a tight end, a heavy two back front, great against run, all right, not so good against option, not so good against sprint out, but great against what they were seeing at that time in 1985 in the NFL. And it revolutionized defensive football in 1985 because the Bears' numbers in 1985 to this day are still unparalleled, okay? But what you got to look at is a 3-4 team can play the 46 front. A 3-4 team can play the over front. A 3-4 team can play the Oki front. A 3-4 team can play the under front. Fronts are universal to the game of football. Any team can play any front at any time they want to. It's just a matter of what personnel they have to play the front. Okay? So when you're looking at defensive football, don't look at the picture all right, and say, wow, that's a 6-2 defense. No, it's not. That's a 3-4 defense played in a 46 front. Okay, so you can't just look at the picture, all right, to determine what type of structure a defense is. If you're watching a football game, the best way to figure out the defensive structure is watch when they introduce the players, all right, and when they go through the labels of the defense, see if they label them as nose and end with four linebackers, or see if they actually label them as four down linemen, three linebackers, or if they label them as four down linemen, two linebackers, and five DBs. That'll tell you what the defensive structure is more than, per se, just looking at a front. All right? If you just look at the front, most people are going to say that's a 6-2 defense. Okay? It's a 3-4 defense in a 46 front. All right? So you have to be able to delineate between fronts and actual defensive structures. All right? It's very important how defensive coordinators choose to play with the personnel on the field. NFL teams have to draft the 3-4 personnel. All right, so when you, when you hear all these general managers or coaches talking about the change to the 3-4, and the Saints are going to go 3-4, all right, with Rob Ryan, and the Eagles with, 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 with now with Andy Reid, the Eagles go to the Kansas City Chiefs, Andy Reid goes to the Chiefs, what are they going to be, 4-3, 3-4? The reason it's important is not so much the schemes. All of those teams are going to play the same coverages, and 90% of them are going to play under front on first down. The problem is now they have to draft and work their roster around finding stand-up outside linebackers. All right? And, and they have to work their roster around finding bigger nose guards and finding all right, defensive ends that can play head up on attack. All right? And they have to work their roster around 3-4 personnel. They can play all the same fronts. 3-4 and 4-3 teams in the NFL with fronts and coverages always look very similar. It's just who they choose to put on the football field. Okay? So now let's talk a little bit about 
All right? Under front defense, and can you play it with split field concepts and check with me coverages? All right? Now, the under front, the first thing you have to realize is the under front is really technically a seven-man front because the Sam linebacker gets tied to the front. All right? So one of the things you're going to have to take a look at is when it's balanced to where the offense gives you the run surface is the same as the passing strength, there's never going to be an issue. The issue arises when the run surface conflicts the passing strength. So right now, if we were going to play under fronts, we're going to set the A-shade to the strength, the 5 to the strength, the Sam linebacker is going to be the 9 technique, we're going to get a 3 technique backside with a 5 technique stand up, all right, outside wheel linebacker, we're going to have a mic and a jack backer inside, we're going to have a corner, we're going to have a strong safety, we're going to have a free safety, and we're going to have a corner, okay? So that would be under front defense, run surface the same as the passing strength surface. Not a problem. I can now play quarters defense here, all right, and I can play two sky or two cloud to the backside, drop a player down to give me run support, play a player off the half. I can play quarter, quarter, half defense, all right, out of three, four under fronts, okay? Not a problem. Very easy to do. The problem arises when I'm going to get now an offensive football team that is going to conflict me, all right, by giving me passing strength away from run surface. So now, if I were to set the under front right now to the run surface and I have the Sam, all right, there's the mic and the jack, and I set the front that way, okay, now what happens is I've got corner, strong safety, free safety, corner to the backside. Now, 15 years ago, when this was played as a field defense a lot of times, what most people would do is they would get any formation into the sideline, which means formation away, okay, from your defensive strength, teams would just roll down and play 3D, all right? They'd roll him down, they'd roll him to the middle, and they'd just get into 3D defense. That was their standard check for formation into the sideline because they, they really couldn't play, all right, divorced front concepts and get the Sam linebacker into the passing strength, all right, while still setting the strength of the front to the run strength. All right, so any teams that gave you a discrepancy between the three-man run surface or the actual run surface and the passing strength, all right, that became a little bit of a problem in your old-fashioned under-front defense, all right, because the Sam is tied to the front as the nine technique. Okay, now, not as big of a problem today because with a lot of 10 and 20 personnel teams, they're never going to give you a conflicting run-pass surface. If a team is 10 or 20 personnel, there's no way for them to give you a run strength one way and a pass strength the other way. An 11 personnel team can do it, okay? An 11 personnel team can give you a little bit of a problem if they put pro flanker to one side, twins to the other, all right? What I would call Miami, some people call it deuce, some people call it spread, okay? I refer to it nowadays as deuce. It was taught to me as Miami, all right? I hear some people talk about it as spread. Three-man run surface is here, but the actual passing strength is back here to the twins. Okay? So if I want to play the underfront to the three-man surface, all right, I have to have an answer back here to the twin side because I'm setting the Sam to the underfront because he's tied into the underfront because it's actually a seven-man front. Okay? So what I want to look at today a little bit as, is playing check-with-me coverages all right, like I like to play in the 4-2-5, and can we do that by setting the front six to under strength, all right, or playing under fronts with the front strength, the front six in the box lined up to run strength while using the Sam linebacker kind of as a nickel and moving him with the strong safety around to passing strength, okay? So let's put the conflict up again, okay? Let's put the twin set up with two backs, Okay, and let's talk about the original conflict because the three-man run surface was opposite the passing strength. Okay, now, I want to play under fronts, but I want to play divorced front secondary concepts, split field check with me. Okay, here's how I would do it if I wanted to be an under front team. All right, but I want it to be divorced front secondary. All right, now I'm not saying this is how everybody would do it. I'm not even saying this is how you want to do it. You may just want to check three deep with formation into the sideline. All I'm doing is giving you a different perspective on how you can give the illusion of the underfront, set the A-shade and the 5 technique to the three-man surface, 
okay? Because this formation right here is a dying breed. You hardly ever get it anymore. So it's really not, you know, it, it's, it doesn't make a lot of sense for a defense to worry about a formation that you almost never see anymore, all right? But when you put a defense in, one of the things you have to understand is, what are the problems that can arise? And do I have all the problems answered, okay? I don't think it makes sense to go to a defensive meeting and put something in and not discuss all the concepts, all right, and understand where the problems are going to come from. So even though this, this formation is a dying breed, I have to understand how would my kids handle this if I was asking them to play check with me coverages, okay? So it's a two by one set, all right? It's a two by one set, okay? So for our kids in our split field coverages, all right, we're gonna wanna play two reader palms to this twin side, and we're gonna, we're gonna wanna play some type of cover two backside sky or hard, all right? So here is how I would Divorce the front in an under concept and play split field check with me coverages. Again, just me. All right, my opinion. I would set the I would set the front the A shade and the five technique. I would set them to the run strength because that's the goal of the defense when you're playing the under front. So I would set the three technique and the will linebacker. All right, again, will linebacker, not defensive end because this is three four personnel. I'd set those guys away and make it reduction. Okay, I put the mic with the front. I put the jack with the front, uh, away from the front to the reduction side, okay? Now, the difference is I would travel the Sam linebacker as my nickel safety, all right? And I would travel him to the passing strength. So now what would happen is my safety would make a rip call. Up front, my Mike linebacker, he would say shut left. He wants the strength of the defensive front to go left. So right now, he wants the A-shade to be on the left, okay? But in the back, my safety would make a rip, rip call. So he wants to send the Sam linebacker to the passing strength, okay? He wants to set himself. Now, again, this is 3-4 personnel, so I'm going to draw this up as a strong safety, not the free safety. For me, in 4-2-5, it would be the free safety. Strong safety makes the rip call. He wants to set himself over here with the Sam to the passing strength. That's going to put the free safety and the backside corner away, okay? So, for me, check with me coverages. I want to play to this twin side, okay? I want to play... Two read defense, also known as palms, also known as blue, all right, in the TCU ver verbiage, all right, or four, two, five guys. I want to play two read there. I'm fine. That's my normal rule. Now, to the single split, my rule tells me that I need to play some type of cover two, okay, defense, all right, old fashioned cover two, all right, not TCU cover two, because TCU's cover two is actually their terminology for Robert. This is old-fashioned cover two. I want to play with a hard flat player, and I want to play with a deep half player, okay? So what I would do is I would play two sky here, okay? I would make my free safety get up and give the illusion, all right? I'm not going to play him in a nine because he's a safety, and I don't train him to play in a nine. So I'm probably going to play him about maybe two or three off, two or three wide, right here to give the illusion of the under front. He's the D-gap flat player. He's who the Sam would be if you played, all right, check with me, or if you played, I'm sorry, formation into the sideline, three deep defense, and you roll down to the twins, that Sam linebacker would be D-gap flat force. That's who he is. So now we're just going to take the safety and put him down there to give us the illusion of that under front. I'm going to take my corner here, and he's going to play the deep half of that side of the coverage. If you remember from some of the earlier blogs, so what I told you was anytime you're playing deep half to a nub tight end side, this corner can play a robber type technique. In other words, he can flat foot, road runner, okay, bounce, whatever you want to call it. He can do all of that from about 10 yards deep off the tight end. And if he gets a run block from the tight end, he can go right now because he can't get beat to the deep half if the only receiver to beat him to the deep half run blocks, okay? So right now, all he's got to worry about is what that tight end does. That's the only guy right now that can beat him to the deep half with the exception of a back coming from out of the backfield. So if the only guy that can beat him to the deep half is, is in the box as a nub tight end, we're going to play him in a robber concept, and that's how we're going to get an extra guy in the box. That corner is going to become an extra guy in the box right now, all right, because if he gets any run blocks, he's going hard to fit the alley between the force of the free safety and the run of the mic. Okay? So now I can play divorced front, three, four under concepts with my normal split field coverages. Okay? Now, let's take a look at one of the other, all right, possible conflicting fronts. Let's take a look at 10 personnel. All right? 
This is always a problem in, in the 4-2-5 for me, how you want to play it. Let's put the tight end over here and let's go one back. All right? Again, one back, deuce, Miami, spread, pro, twins to the other side. All right? Our front says we want to set it to the three-man surface. So we have to go ahead and set the mic, the A-shade, and the five technique there. We've got to set the three technique and the will linebacker back there. Okay? The jack's going to go with them. Okay? Now here's the problem. You've got two by two. You've got a three-man run surface with two receivers, and then you have a two-man twin side with two receivers. Okay? So what's going to happen is, even though it's two by two, what are you going to declare the passing strength for your back five players? Now, a lot of teams are going to declare this the passing strength, okay? And they're going to declare this the passing strength because it has two receivers as opposed to a receiver on a tight end, okay? So if you were to declare that the passing strength and you were going to set your Sam linebacker here and your strong safety here, okay, now what's going to happen, all right, is you're going to play two read palms or blue here because that's your, that's your rule for your kids. Anytime they have twins receivers, number two removed, they're going to play two read palms or blue. Okay? That's their standard rule. Now, to the back side, the problem is you also have two receivers, but you really only have two secondary players, okay, because the mic is extremely out leveraged by the tight end. You can't ask the mic from the box, okay? I've seen teams or heard teams that say they want to play quarters to both sides and ask the mic to be the flat force player if two goes to the flat. Not happening when the mic is in the box. Not good football. Okay? So quarters concepts are out. If you're into the boundary, can you play a hard cover two? Yeah, you can play a hard cover two, but you're going to ask this corner to support the run versus a three-man surface inside zone. That way it's going to become a little bit of an issue. Okay? So what most 4 two, five teams are going to do, okay, on the back end, is anytime they get two by two like that, they'll just make a lock call back here, and they'll play this man, and they'll play it man. And since it's one back and they can't get a lead blocker to the front side, they're going to tell this free safety, hey, anytime the tight end blocks, you've got to go down and make yourself an extra player now to get us an extra player on the run. Now, not as good of a look from the under front because of where the five technique is, okay? Not as good of a look at the under front because of the five sitting here with the tight end, all right? You've got a lot of angles. You've got leverage. All right, but, but think about it in a way. What can they really do? All right, so they want to double. You're going to say, well, coach, you got a short edge here. They're just going to try and double the five. They'll hammer him down. All right, well, here comes the free safety unblocked. Okay, all right. All right, now, well, coach, you know, they'll just, they'll chip up and they'll outside zone and they'll try and reach the five, all right, and then maybe they'll pin here and get the center out on the horn and they got him going. Well, okay, you still have the free safety down with the mic running. It's one back. They can't outnumber you over there, okay? So even though I really don't like it, out of the under front to the tight end there with the safety back playing man, it's still possible to do. All right? It's still possible to do if you wanted to play split field check with me coverages. Now, the other way you can do it, and the way that I like it a little bit better myself is, okay, you can actually declare the passing strength the same as the run strength. So now you can set your front, all right? You can set your front right here with your A-shade, your five technique, and actually put the Sam to the side because now you're going to make this a shut left, okay? You're going to make this shut left, but you're also going to make a Liz call behind it. So you're going to put the Sam, the strong safety, you're going to put them to the passing strength. Now, back here, you just have two players. Okay, well, you got two choices now, all right? Your choices are, go ahead and play the same version of lock coverage with the safety on number two and the corner on number one, which a lot of four, two, five teams will do in the middle of the field, to two by two, okay? Go ahead and make a lock call, play a man, lead the jack where he belongs in the box, and tell him, go ahead, run the football at that look. Okay, you can do that. A lot of teams do it, okay? Stony Brook does it a ton on the backside. They're a great four, two, five team. TCU will do it on the backside. A ton of people do it, okay? Now, the other option, is you can just take the jack linebacker, okay, and you can hip him behind the willy here, all right? You can hip him behind the will, and you can let these guys play two read, palms, or blue, all right? Like you always do to twins, like I would teach my kids to do to twins. You can play two read, palms, or blue. Now, if you're going to do that, because the hip linebacker is to the side of the three and the five, what you're probably going to do is want to make some type of tag call, send a three technique to the A-gap, so now the jack linebacker who's hipped 
His open gap becomes the B gap. All right, so all you got to understand if you want to play two reader palms to the three and the five side is help the jack linebacker in a three technique out by sending the three tech to the A gap and making the open gap for the jack linebacker who's hit. Make his open gap be the B gap. So now if he gets zone or runs away, he's just got to fold the B gap first, not ask himself to fold in here to the A gap. Okay, so it's all possible. It's all feasible. I'll tell you where I really do like, though, the under front concept, okay, the under front concept in check with B coverages, where I really like it, okay, is when you get three by one, ten personnel teams, okay? And here's why I really like it, because now the run strength and the passing strength are the same, so now you're going to set, okay, now you're going to make this shut left because this is the run strength, but it's also the passing strength, so now you're going to set your Sam or your nickel backer and your strong safety there, free safety there, corner there. Okay, here's why I really like it personally, because now to the trip set, you can get the Mike linebacker to bump and help the trips out here, okay, because now his immediate fold gap is the B gap. So he can get wider and hip because now his fold in gap on the run is the B gap. Now you can take the jack, all right, from the backside and you can bump him a little bit. And now depending on what you want to do in coverage, remember this is a Sam linebacker now, not a safety. Okay, so maybe you want to play some type of, all right, zone concept. You want to stay two on the backside, all right, so you want to stay with him dropping down and him off the corner, or you want to stay, all right, with him rolled up hard and him off the half. So now maybe you split one and two at the corner, you split two and three with the safety, all right, your Sam voids the flat and becomes a curl player, your Mike becomes a short wall of three in the hook, okay. Just keep in mind that your coverages now are going to be dictated by that Sam linebacker, all right, and then what you want to do on the backside, okay, what you want to do on the backside with that free safety if you're going to ask him to play three vertical or if you're going to leave him on the backside independently over here so you can hammer the single receiver, all right. But just keep in mind that guy's an outside linebacker, all right, so you can't play maybe some of the coverages you can from the 4-2-5 and ask him to do some of the things on two vertical or play man-to-man. -man because he may not be in the greatest matchup. But I love the under front concept with the open B gap to three by one because it allows the Mike to play wider while still playing his initial run gaps, okay? As a four, two, five team, I set the three and the five. I make it easy for my kids, so I don't like it as much, but I set the three and the five there. So now I've got to do some things. I might have to cancel some run gaps or I might have to run some stunts in here because the Mike hips, all right, but his, his actual run gap fall in is all the way back to the A gap. So I actually like the under front concept to three by one a lot better. Okay, but again, you know, the, keep in mind what you got to understand is defensive personnel is what dictates what they're playing, not the front. I can play any front and draw it up to you from four two five four from four three three four doesn't matter. I can draw any front up in the world that you want me to draw. The personnel that I play with is what matters to me, okay? The under front are the 3-4 teams. They have a Sam linebacker to play in a 9 technique. I'm a 4-2-5 guy. I don't have a guy that can play in a 9. So I'm not going to play an under front, okay? But conversely, I have a safety out here that can play 2 vertical. So I can play more versions of coverage to 3 by one than the 3-4 team can because they're trapped at the Sam linebacker. So you just got to understand who your personnel is and what you're trying to do on defense, okay? So hopefully by going through some of that stuff today, spring break, I wanted to make a little bit longer blog. I just wanted to clear up some of the misconceptions and get people to kind of understand what defines a defensive football team. Okay? It's not the fronts, believe me. And it's not the coverages either because fronts and coverages are universal. Everybody can play them from anywhere. Okay? It's the personnel that you choose to put on the field. Choose the personnel that you think is best. All right? Choose the personnel that you think fits your program and choose the personnel you think lines up every week and gets your kids to play fast. The goal of this in high school football is to get kids to be able to line up and play fast. The goal is not to have the marker in your hand last and try and outcoach the other guy with the marker. Okay? Nowadays in high school football, you're going to be standing there with the marker on the side putting your extra point team in to block every extra point that they score every two minutes. The goal is to play fast and get your kids to play fast. You'll never play good football until you play fast football.